Hey, 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 love and light to each and every one of you guys. Welcome to the Dope Black Chick Podcast, your audio guide to releasing your dopeness. Hey guys, welcome to the Dope Black Chick Podcast and I have a good one for you this week. So we all know that Queen and Slim is in theaters right now. We've heard all the hype about this film. Um, it came at the perfect time, Thanksgiving weekend. And, um, you know, lots of people went out to see the film. The responses that I re- saw on my timeline were, you know, everybody's like, this is a must see film. You must go see this. Um, you know, so I the expectation was that we were told that this was going to be, you know, the great Lena Waithe has get, given us a new classic, right? This is supposed to be one of our, one up there with the Minister Societies and all Love Jones and all that. Like, we, I was really excited about this film. Um, we thought we'd finally see the black man's comeuppance in a film and also it was you know kind of tattered as the voice of our perspective or at least this is what we expected right so let me tell y'all something i know you already kind of understand uh based on the title of today's podcast uh, we definitely deserve more um i saw it and i no it failed it failed it failed it failed um not what I expected at all. Totally uh, contrary to what I expected, to be honest with you. So let's have a real conversation about what was not there. It was everything not what I expected. Uh, so much was left unsaid. So much that should have been done instead of um like i have so much to say about this film so let's just go ahead and get started um so let me talk about the things that should have been said or instead of other things well let's just talk about some of these important themes that were overlooked um i felt like going into the film we had this beautiful setup for a proper you know, realization of some very important themes, right? So we're dealing with the racism at the very onset of the film. And so I thought like that was going to be discussed. Now, one thing that came across to me almost immediately as your, you know, as the film starts, Christianity or spirituality, let's just say. So I felt like that was a great theme that was going to be used throughout the film. It was used, but it wasn't used the way that I felt like it should have. You know, um, I, I consider myself a very spiritual person. You know, I love the Lord. And I felt like there was no power behind this person who is spiritually connected. You're, you're seeing this actor portray a person who is really you know deeply rooted and connected to god and that that aspect could have been used so greatly in this film as you know i'm expecting this man to tap into that for guidance um, you know, you're in a horrible situation and when you get into your toughest, roughest times, who do you call on? And none of that happened. Instead, to me, I felt like his Christianity was there to serve as a backdrop to his buffoonery, to him being a bumbling fool or just not knowing what to do or being soft or being weak. That those are the connotations I got with his Christianity. Because, you know, th- there were so many frames of showing us, you know, he's carrying the cross and um, he's praying really, really hard. He's, you know, he's a, he comes from a good home. And all of that was shown to us. But at the same time, it was like when it comes down to it, he don't know what to do. He wants to give up. 
he wants to turn himself in because he always wants to do the right thing. And I'm just like, is that the view of Christians or anyone who is spiritually adept? Like that, that, that was one of the things I saw. I don't know if y'all noticed that, but I definitely noticed it because the sister now, she was a great actress. I can't even remember her name, but she did a great job. But, um, she was very stoic in the film, but I think that was her character, um, as well. But she was very stoic in the film and she, but she was very decisive. So she knew exactly like, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to move. And I like that about her, but it's interesting that she was an atheist. <laughs> so the person that doesn't believe in God knows exactly what they need to do. The person that does believe in God is sitting there just twiddling their thumbs, don't know what to do. Like, I'm, eh, I don't know if I was here for that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here for that type of theme. So those, those, that kind of thing was being seen a lot. Um, and y'all let me know if you agree or disagree with that, or if you noticed that in the film. Um, but that was like at the, the top of the film, you know, you see him praying over the food. Even I said, that's a really long prayer. So I was like, okay, they're doing that kind of trying to emphasize his, his Christianity to emphasize his, his, um, spirituality. And I was like, ah, okay, what we going to do with this? I'm thinking this is going to be, you know, the clutch thing in your pocket, you know, cause I know when I struggle through stuff, it's Jesus that get me through it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm expecting that. And, you know, he never called on that power. So I felt like that was something that could have been used and just definitely wasn't. Um, another one, black love, black love. It, I, this is what I expected. I thought this was a revolutionary love story, right? Did not get that. I did not get that. For one, her disdain for him. It was like she said that she went to Tinder just for, just not to be alone. She didn't want to be alone. So it was almost like, um, you know, immediately you're putting this person on both sides. Like you're just to be used, you know, toyed with. And um, yeah, I don't want anything. I just didn't want to be alone. So you're a plaything. And I felt like that was, you know, for her to tell him to, her, to his face, like you're a plaything. You're just something that is, you know, occupying my time right now. And I felt like, mm, okay, you know, maybe, maybe they're going to start out this way and then she's just going to grow to love him. But it just seemed like it was so harsh to the point where I'm like, damn, do you have to be that way to him? Um, so I wasn't feeling that. I wasn't feeling her too towards him when he didn't do anything to um to warrant that kind of response you know what i'm saying to warrant that kind of behavior to him i'm like what has brother done to warrant that you know um then it's like the evolution of their love i don't even know where that came from i felt like it was just thrown in there because it was like now it's time they need to be in love and then the way that the love was shown was weird to me too because for me, I, I felt like, and this is again, what I'm saying about things that should have been done. You know, it's like all the, the ingredients for a great meal were there, but we didn't make the, <laughs> we didn't use the recipe the way that we should have. And so in the film, her love, she shows the love when she has sex with him, right? Because like totally up until the moment she had sex with him. We thought she just really didn't like him, right? And then all of a sudden she had sex with him. And now she loves him. Weird to me. Because I'm like, especially as a woman who has um, personally had to conquer, you know, learning how to emotionally attach to someone. That for me was like, why are we showing this perspective? But anyway. I felt like if this is going to be a revolutionary love story, then the love was shown the moment she got out the car and wanted to protect him. 
You know what I'm saying? I felt like this could have been a story that says we as black people, black man, black woman, we need each other. We protect each other. We love each other. And that was the love that was growing is that she was there to, cause I understand your pain. I understand your plight. I want to protect you and you in turn should want to protect me. And like, I thought that was going to be the development of love throughout this film. And it really wasn't. I felt like he loved her, you know, um, he, of course he was upset <laughs> at first, but I think, I felt like he really was open to loving her and she just wasn't. So, um, I felt like love didn't shine through. I just felt like it was almost like um, out of obligation towards the end. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm obligated to love you at this point because I've left everything else behind. So I'm obligated to love you instead of a true growing love um, from that from that bitter root of, you know, we have that one oppression and we survive together. That is what I wanted to see. And I felt like all the building blocks for that kind of love story was there and it wasn't used. All right. So then here's another thing. The root cause of this entire spectacle of a film, right? <laughs> so the film itself is, um, you get two hours plus, I think, of the effect and you get five minutes of the cause and I, I'm so sick of that I am so sick of this narrative in America where we where we take our time focusing on the effect of something and never looking at the root of the thing you see what I'm saying so like the the issue with the cop that set all of this off was literally maybe five to seven minutes in length. And the rest of the film focuses solely on the effect of what happened at that stop. I felt like, are we ever going to touch on um, how the officer is responsible? But instead, it was looked at as... The fact that y'all run ran, it's your fault. So it's back on the black people. I'm like, Jesus, can we never, ever? It's like the focus is on the effect and all the blowback, blowback goes on us. And I'm just so fed up with it constantly being our fault. You know, as long as no one wants to talk about the root. Yes, every issue that we run into as black people is our own fault. You, you know, people will say, oh, well, we're killing each other. So that's our fault. We are living um, in poverty. That's our fault. Oh, we can't get jobs. That's our fault. Oh, we're stacking up the prisons. That's our fault. So everything else is our fault if you choose not to look at the root cause. And I just was like, I know that this film is not going to do that. I, I hope that this film is going to dissect the root Everything that set off this sequence of events, but it didn't, it didn't, I mean, it didn't touch any of it. Um, another thing that bothered me was it seemed like, you know, of course the, I, I wondered, did cops finance this film? <laughs> like was, it felt like an all lives matter film. And I was like, you know. None of all the cops were so helpful in the film. Like, so helpful. You got one cop, he's like, let me help you. You know, getting him gas and stuff. And then you got the black cop. And I don't even want to spoil it for y'all, but that that whole situation. That's a whole other episode. And I'm going to wait and give y'all one more week to watch this film before I talk about that. And the repercussions of such a scene. But I'm, oh, good jeez, Louise. Um... Whew. You know what? I'm just going to talk about it anyway. I'm sorry. You should have saw it. Um, so those are things that I feel like those are themes that should have been addressed a different way. It's a perfect opportunity to really make a strong film that helps black 
the black community feel some type of liberation, some type of, you know, see, feeling that we've been seen or heard or understood for five seconds. Um, and that never happened. So this was the thing here. Like Christianity doesn't make you soft, but that was definitely seen. Black men are not bumbling idiots. You know, and I, I felt like he was made to be like this. He doesn't know what to do. I even said while I'm sitting there, I was like, uh, he's weak. Why isn't he doing anything? Like, I need to see strong black leads in films. You know, I feel like, you know, we have come a long way with making sure that there is some representation out here of ourselves. But at the same time, we are doing it at a cost where we are not degrading our black man, but we are definitely limiting the types of leads that we are seeing from black men. Now I see some strong black women, but I'm not seeing my strong black men as much on screen as much as I would like to. I want to see strong black men as a black woman. I want to be able to look on that screen and see a black man take charge and, 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 and lead and protect and guide his woman. Like that's what I want to see. And I didn't see that. And I that that's a whole other thing that I want to talk about. But I'm really starting to wonder, like, what's really going on? Because even during the previews, there were like seven films, um, trailers shown. And out of all of those, there was only one with a male lead. Um, and it was Adam Sandler, of all people. Um, not Nothing against Adam Sandler, who I absolutely adore. And I think he's a great actor. But, um, Adam Sandler and the, every other film was, you know, with, uh, had a female lead. Um, there was two, maybe, no, there was one, um, the photograph with Issa Rae and Keith, what's his name? I can't remember it. that now that's, that looks like a beautiful film and, um, they're equally starring in that one. And I feel like he's being, he's going to be a strong lead on that one. So I'm kind of excited about that that film the photograph but even more so I just really feel it's important for us to have a film with a strong black male lead as well we're going into 2020 let's pray that that happens and then here's a question guys so does love make you indecisive or does it make you weak because that's how love happened to um happened to your girl in the film like I don't even know these people name in the film yeah I really don't um but yeah I'm just like she knew where to go how to move you know she had all the answers until the moment she had sex with him and the moment she had sex with him she was a bumbling fool too so now you got two bumbling fools you know what I'm saying so like they're doing all the dumbest stuff after she done had sex she hanging out the window who does you ain't on no you ain't beyonce like it was just too much it was it was just too much i was just like come on now why is it why are we doing this at this point of the film you know what i'm saying anyway all right here's the spoiler why did the young man um that you know the the guy fixed their car and his son why did he feel the need to shoot the cop and on top of that, why did the, why did this scene had to be in here? First of all, of the young man shooting the cop, but two, why did it have to be a black cop that is shot? Cause for me, I was like, are you saying that when we protest, when we decide that enough is enough, and we even in this situation of self defense, are you saying that we are showing our youth that it's okay to kill anybody? Oh, that's what you're saying. Cause like even the father made that statement. He was like, just cause of y'all, these kids think it's okay. Like, why are you putting that on me? Why are you putting that responsibility in their lap? I didn't like that theme. I didn't like the message that was being sent on this. And, and I'm sorry, y'all, when you're film writers, when you're writing, when you're doing things like this and you have this grand, um, platform, those messages are being put out there and I'm telling you guys that's what I felt I was like are you really seriously going to take this film to say that it's our fault 
if black people retaliate against oppression against themselves. Wow. Wow. Like it was not what I expected guys. Um, Again, the racism, the cause of this whole thing was lost in a movie about the effects. And when will we ever discuss the issues of the cause? You know, the root. Black people have dealt with the blame being placed on us for so long. And with white people, the colonizers, refusing to look at the root like they are just blatantly refusing to look at it and they're like that happened long ago it has no effect on this you know what i'm saying but we will not instead we focus so much on what black people can do what black people should do how we should behave to assimilate or be appreciated or accept it even and i am so through with that like i'm through with that Here's the thing that really pissed me off, y'all. So, they took the picture, right? And at the end of all of this, two and a half hours of my life, at the end of this, they put a mural up on the wall. Y'all, black people have to be okay with being remembered. Are you serious? (laughs) Like... I don't need a fucking mural. I'd much rather live than have a mural as representation of me. You know, the protection that should have been there, should have been shown through this movie, through us, that wasn't there. I thought that, you know, I thought that they were going to utilize the black people as their shelter. You know, just showing this camaraderie of us. This was a perfect field to do that in. And yet, it wasn't there. Like the only protection they got was they got some free drinks at the bar. I'm like, really? Really? That's how we protect each other. We give each other free drinks at the bar. What the fuck is that? Come on, like, come, like, let's stop. This film was wrong on so many levels, man. Um, here's another, here's another thing that came across. Uh, the savior of the film was a white man. Yep. The savior of the film was a white man. Um, you know, we always go running to the white man. The white man had, he's the only one that offered his home and, you know, safety and would not turn his back on them. And the villain ends up being ourselves again. I'm like, God damn, are y'all serious? When you had it set up to where the villain could have been, could have been the white woman, but no, 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 no. Let's bring it back. Cause again, it is ourselves, you know? And so they had this whole conversation about legacy. And and I'm like, y'all talking about legacy and the real story will never, ever be told. So at the very end, I really thought, I was like, yeah, you know, this is where the legacy thing plays at. Because, you know, somebody has to be the legacy, right? Well, no one will ever know their story because no one lived to tell the truth. And the cops were able to spin the story. Of what actually took place. Which is something we see all the time. So I'm sitting there like. It's always up to us to forgive. To do the right thing. To concede ourselves to our own injustice. Like. You know what I left the movie theater with? Anger. Frustration. And I felt as if. I had wasted two and a half hours of my life. For the same story. That I live with daily. A daily reality. That we are always at fault. Even when we are not. That there is no justice for us. And our freedom. Comes only with our death. That is not how I should have felt. Coming out of that theater. That's not what I paid my money for. So no. I hate this film. It it was it was just a failure, a complete failure of of it. It failed its own potential. That's what happened in this film. If you disagree with your girl, hit me up, the dope black chick at gmail dot com. Shoot me an email, and we can talk about it. Or you can leave a voice message if you're on Anchor. You can do that. Leave me a voice message, and we'll talk about it. If you want to hit me up on Instagram 
at the dope black chick. We'll talk about it. I don't mind having this conversation with you guys now that I have everything out. But I just wasn't here for the film. If you caught something that I didn't catch that you feel like may change my point of view, please, I am begging you, show it to me so that I will feel like I got my money's worth at the theater. But um, this is definitely going to be two thumbs down for me. Uh, Queen and Slim was the biggest letdown of 2019. All right. Until next time, guys. Peace and blessings.